Hi guys, probably for the last time, the last time of the summer of 2017, I can say it is a gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise by the shores of Baker Lake in Washington State as we enjoy one more day of summer in the end times before all hell breaks loose. So it is Saturday. December 16th, 2017, so Saturday is when I bring you my clueless moron roundup rant where I simply go on the pages of the mainstream media to see how this planet's IQ is heading directly down the toilet, and I didn't get one of these done last year, so I'm going to try to squeeze two weeks worth of stories in, uh, so some of these might sound a little bit dated. But I've got 27 stories to go over, so I better dive right in. Let's get back to some last-minute Hurricane Harvey news. Harvey wrecks up to 1 million cars in car-dependent Houston. There you go. Um, the flooding from Harvey destroyed as many as a million cars in the Houston metro area. Reliable transportation is a daily fundamental need, almost more so in the wake of a disaster. Add in the fact that Houston is a car-dependent city and the consequences of the destruction of so many gas-sucking cars comes into stark focus. How will rental companies and dealerships suddenly supply cars to people who need them right now? How do people get permanent cars? And what is the fate for the many people who cannot afford to replace their only way of getting around? There you go. Um, 94.4 percent of households in the Houston area have cars, 1.8 each on average. Only Dallas has a higher percentage. Okay, from Harvey to Irma, more than 50 people arrested for looting in Miami during Hurricane Irma. Miami area police arrested more than 50 suspected looters during Hurricane Irma, including 26 people who were accused of breaking into a single Walmart store, authorities said. Um, the Walmart incident took place on Saturday night at a store on the north side. Among others suspected of looting were six men arrested on Monday and accused of breaking into stores in Midtown Shopping Comp near, near the fashionable Wynwood District before making off with merchandise that included shoes handbags and laptops. I remember it was one of these uh, little lefty progressive sort of, I think it was probably democracy now uh, coming out a few days ago uh, about describing these looters were people just trying to get food. I'm not sure how you eat a a designer shoe, a designer handbag, and a, uh, and a designer laptop. Searching for food, my ass. Uh, but from Miami to Jacksonville, uh, exactly how do you eat this? Two Florida men accused of stealing enormous power pole after Irma. <laughs> Police in Jacksonville, Florida have arrested two men for allegedly trying to steal a gigantic power pole in the wake of Hurricane Irma. They each now face a charge of grand theft. How big was this son of a bitch? It doesn't, uh, 
tell that, but it's one of these big ass metal ones. We're not talking a wooden one. We're talking one of these big ass fucking metal power poles that got knocked over in the wind. Amazingly, they didn't electrocute themselves. I guess they were trying to strap it onto their car to take it to a metal recycler when they were when they were busted. You're reading about this in Sub-Saharan Africa that one of the reasons that they cannot keep the power on in Sub-Saharan Africa because every time uh, they try to put up a fucking power pole or a power line, the uh, the looters just come by and knock over the power poles and steal the fucking power pole and the power line. Don't know if these guys were Sub-Saharan African immigrants or not. How about, let's go over to, to Gainesville, Florida. Police department warns women not to call 9-11 after photo of officers helping during Irma goes viral. So apparently this photo of these hunky looking, uh, these hunky looking uh, police officers have got the the panties all wet in Gainesville. This is one comment uh, after the photo received 300,000 likes and 100,000 comments. This is one of the 100,000 comments from adoring women. I can't believe how many women are objectifying these poor, fine, young, strong, handsome, brave, sexy, delicious, virile, ovulation-inducing, mouth-watering, beefy. I can't remember where I was going with this. Uh, now, of course, I was going to lead off with this new uh, Alex Jones conspiracy theory that Donald Trump is being drugged in his Diet Cokes, but I've already done a full rant on that one. Uh, from Donald Trump to Steve Munchkin. Steve Munchkin asked to use government plane for his European honeymoon at taxpayers' expense. Treasury Secretary Steve Munchkin formally requested, and apparently it was denied, to use a government plane for his honeymoon to Scotland, France, and Italy this summer. Travel on such an aircraft would have cost American taxpayers $25,000 per day. Uh, the office is already looking into Munchkin's travel on an Air Force jet to Louisville, Kentucky last month, which just happened to coincide with the solar eclipse. Munchkin, a multimillionaire and former Goldman Sachs executive, and, and, and now, uh, you know, one of Trump's horsemen of the apocalypse, and his wife, actress Louise Linton, came under fire last month when Louise posted a photo to Instagram showing them descending from the jet's, I guess, a government jet staircase. She tagged the designer brands she was wearing in the image and attacked a person who criticized her for being, quote, adorably out of touch from a uh, good good guy and I guys I, I'm trying not to do an entire rant about Hillary Clinton's new book I just pulled a couple Hillary Clinton has unveiled a new put down for Bernie Sanders Hillary is promoting a new criticism of Bernie Sanders in her new memoir that her former Democrat primary challenger is not a Democrat at all and therefore did not have the party's best interests in mind. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's Bernie Sanders' fault that uh, Hillary 
that Hillary lost. Now this next one, guys, all joking aside, uh, in, in defense of Hillary Clinton, uh, hallelujah, this is no joke, this is straightforward. Hillary Clinton, in her new book, says the Electoral College, quote, needs to be eliminated. Hallelujah, Hillary. You know, where Hillary, thanks to the Electoral College, uh, had, what was it, about three million more votes than Donald Trump, and she still managed to lose because of the clueless fucking moron Electoral College. We are the only, I think New Zealand with population about four million people and the United States are the two countries on this planet uh, these democracies, democracies, where's my bullshit detector button, who elect their uh, presidents uh, through this bullshit uh, mechanism, and as the article points out, that uh, Hillary is not the first to suggest the Electoral College should be abolished. Don't forget Donald Trump six years before his unlikely presidential victory, thanks to the Electoral College, it is the, the only reason Donald Trump is in the White House is because of the Electoral College. Quoting Donald Trump, quote, the Electoral College is a disaster for a democracy, he wrote, before the election, once he became uh, president-elect, he said the Electoral College is, quote, actually genius. Okay, as long as we're talking about royalty, let's go from Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump uh, to Prince William and Kate Middleton. What are the royal family up to? The royal family is growing! Prince William and his wife, Kate Middleton, just announced their happiness as they are now expecting their third baby. According to the official palace statement, quote, the queen and members of both families are delighted with the news. Deep, deep. Okay, from England to China, Chinese couple with seven daughters bought, bought baby boy to carry on the family name. A Chinese couple with seven daughters allegedly bought a baby boy to carry on their family name. Unfortunately, it would be nice if they put this in dollars, uh, they pay 92,000 yuan or about 11,000 pounds for the abducted child. Tens of thousands of children go missing in China every year and many are victims of huge trafficking rings that operate in the country. Uh, from China, let's see, oh shit, something interfered with this website loading. Well, at least this is one already a mother. This was a, a single mother working at McDonald's. Uh, all I have here is the headline, Mom allegedly tried to flush her newborn baby down McDonald's toilet. Uh, I, anyway, enough of that. Now, again, the, this, this roundup is a couple of weeks old, so you've probably already heard of this. The appropriately named Burning Man Festival. Burning Man Festival horror as man dodges firefighters and dives into flames. There you go. A man at the Burning Man Festival, is it dived or dove? 
dived into the Burning Man effigy at the famous festival in Nevada after evading security to the horror of thousands of onlookers. Astonishingly, he was pulled from the inferno and taken to a hospital, but later died. There you go. He was celebrating the Burning Man Festival. Here is a weird story. Many versions of this one. BBC documentary maker's pet pit bull was high on cocaine when it attacked him. This is Mario Perviotis or something like that was shooting a BBC documentary with a camera crew at his home in London for the program Drugs Map Britain. He suffered an epileptic shock after consuming cocaine during the filming. He fell down on the bed as a result and that is when his pet Pitbull Major uh, started to nip at his face and neck the dog latched on to his owner's face and refused to let go. Uh, the guy was taken to a hospital where he died from his fatal wounds. Uh, following the incident, the dog, Major, Major's urine was tested for drugs and samples of crack cocaine and morphine were found in it equal to eight times the drug drive limit for a human. From attack pit bulls to bears and wolves, uh, you know, I, I had this fellow, uh, Chris Morgan, spending a night here at my campsite uh, a week or so ago, you know, celebrating the fact that grizzly bears might be returning to Washington State. And, and I was asking him, well, aren't you, don't, don't you think you should probably be keeping this quiet because these fucking rednecks up here, if they hear that grizzly bears are, are coming back in the U.S., they're going to grab their guns and start killing them. Well, Chris didn't seem concerned about this. The very next day after after Chris Morgan was here, we have two stories on the mainstream media. Here is from Romania. Romania to kill bears and wolves after rise in attacks. Uh, and then I tried to find any evidence that there has been a, ri a rise in attacks. Uh, I guess in July, two shepherds were injured by a bear in the Carpathian Mountains. Uh, anyway, the World Wildlife Fund for Nature strongly denounced the measure and blamed the issue, the non-issue, on deforestation. Quote, the authorities should first address the problems that have prompted the bears to get closer and closer to human settlements in the search for food. From bears to France. Row over bears in France intensifies after angry farmers fire shots in protest at sheep deaths. And, and they were not firing shots at the actual bears. They're claiming that we're killing their sheep. So they're claiming these bears are killing all their sheep uh, over there in France. And so these wildlife investigators went to find out whether there was any truth in, into this horseshit accusation that their sheep were being killed by bears. And so when the, when the wildlife authorities went there to investigate, they were met with a hail of bullets from these, from these sheep farmers who the last thing they wanted was a wildlife investigator uh, investigating their bullshit claims. Anyway, I got to charge ahead from uh, bears to chickens. I'm going to probably, I might talk about this more 
in Monday's rant, antibiotic brined chicken and other bad ideas from U.S. farming. These days, the only thing more American than apple pie is eating an animal raised on antibiotics. 80% of antibiotics in the U.S. go not to human patients, but to the nation's plate-bound pigs, cows, turkeys, and chickens, as these wonder drugs have become a mainstay of modern agriculture, factory farms began churning out another far less welcome commodity, antibiotic resistant bacteria. These deadly new microbial threats are expected to claim the lives of 10 million people by 2050. How did this happen and where Will it end? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, anyway, we might. I'm cheering on the antibiotic resistant bacteria. You can thank factory farming for that. And this probably has a dot to factory farming. You make it yourself. Video of UC Berkeley cop taking money from hot dog vendor goes viral. A video of a, of a UC Berkeley bicycle offer citing a Hispanic hot dog vendor and then confiscating cash from his wallet for operating without a permit on outside a football game on the campus Saturday has gone viral on social media media. Yep, that's the cops at Berkeley. Let's go to the cops. Where is this? And I think in New Jersey, Newark, Newark, New Jersey airport. Federal officers arrested for hazing victims using rape table. Three Customs and Border Protection officers assigned to a specialized screening team at Newark Airport were arrested Wednesday not for assaulting uh, pe you know, people on airplanes, but for f assaulting their own fellow officers allegedly pinning their victims to what was known as a rape table, according to court records. This story just gets weirder and weirder, but I've heard enough. From, uh, from New Jersey back to California, California officers accused of, quote, sadistic and terrorizing acts against prisoners. Four California, this is Alameda County, California, four California sheriff's deputies have been accused of, quote, sadistic and terrorizing acts against inmates, including encouraging prisoners to throw urine and feces at each other, laughing at a sexual assault victim seeking help, strangling an inmate into unconsciousness, and intimidating witnesses. The felony assault charges against the four deputies accused of victimizing eight prisoners have provided a window into the violent abuse and misconduct that prisoners' rights activists say is still commonplace in jails across the country, including in progressive regions that have pledged reforms. Okay, from cops to uh, pastors, let's get to the end of the world, shall we? Ex-lawmaker gets 21 years for end of the world coin scam. Larry Bates told his listeners of Christian radio broadcast programs that they should buy gold and silver coins to give them financial protection during a supposedly 
supposedly looming economic collapse termed Mystery Babylon. Um, imagine that, someone recommending you buy physical silver coins as protection against a supposedly looming economic collapse. Trusting Bates' status as a former Tennessee lawmaker and believing that he was an honest Christian man, hundreds of people sent him their money for the coins and waited for their shiny coins to arrive. So many times they waited. So many times the coins never came. Okay, so that's what's going on with the pastors. What's going on with the aspiring pastors in North Carolina, at least? Aspiring pastor accused of murdering his wife blames it on cough syrup. A man in Raleigh, North Carolina, said that after he woke from a, quote, dream early Friday morning, said he found his wife dead on the floor, and as he told a 911 dispatcher, I think I did it. Quote, I have blood all over me, and there's a bloody knife on the bed. I think I did it. I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Hmm. Phelps uh, blamed his alleged blackout on cough syrup he took earlier in the evening to help him sleep. Quote, I took more medicine than I should have. I took coracidin cough and cold because I know it can make you feel good. A lot of times I can't sleep at night. Okay. How about this one? Uh, headline pretty much says it all. Man posts slaves for sale sign next to his Confederate flag to prove he is no racist. A Missouri man angered his neighbors by posting a slaves for sale sign right above his Confederate flag. Richard Geisenheiner's rationale for the racist sign next to the racist flag? He wanted to show that he is not a racist. Geisenheiner regularly flies his Confederate flag in front of his home in Liberty, Missouri. As a result, many people have assumed that he is a white supremacist, and that makes him angry. Quote, if people actually believe that a Confederate flag stands for slavery, well, I might as well be just as stupid as they are. He said, I might as well be just as stupid as they are. Okay, what's going on with the little Japs? I assume you know what a J-A-P is. Woman accused of shooting homeless man who asked her to move Porsche. A Nashville woman has been charged with attempted murder after she allegedly shot a homeless man who asked her to move her Porsche. Police said 26-year-old Katie Quackenbush shot Gerald Melton uh, during the er, around 3 a.m. So Melton, this is a long involved story, so this homeless man in his mid-50s uh, was trying to find a fucking place to sleep. So he was sleeping on the sidewalk and, and this entitled little bitch uh, getting in her Porsche so what, what pissed him off was that she starts her Porsche and, and the radio is blaring. Her fucking, this clueless fucking bitches, uh, this entitled little c 
cunt. Her her radio is fucking blaring at, from her Porsche at 3 o'clock in the goddamn morning. The guy gets up off of his cardboard mattress and goes, you clueless fucking bitch, could you shut off your goddamn radio at 3 o'clock in the fucking morning that people are trying to sleep around here? He turned around, went back and laid down. She got out of her Porsche. It does not say whether or not she turned the uh, radio down before she got back out of her car, walked down the sidewalk, and shot the man, almost killing him. I'm hoping she is, uh, what is, uh, she's been a charge with attempted murder. She was later released from jail on $25,000 bond. Okay, from that clueless fucking bitch to what's going on with brotherly love recently. Man stabs brother to death in fight over internet devices. A fight over internet devices ended with a 20-year-old Massachusetts man Stabbing his brother to death, police said. Uh, their mother called police Tuesday evening after her son's argument over their digital devices that overtaxed the home's internet bandwidth turned bloody. Okay, what's going on with the younger generation who isn't stabbing uh, each other to death over internet devices and, uh, and, and shooting homeless people, flushing babies down the toilet at McDonald's? How about college student 21 killed while train hopping? A young college student died over the weekend while train hopping in Pittsburgh. This is Lindsay Michaels was reportedly engaged in the dangerous practice of, of hopping on trains and going from car to car with a companion when she fell between the trains and was dragged to her death. The man who was with her suffered an ankle injury. The 21-year-old was pursuing a degree in biology. From falling uh, between train cars, man falls to death from bridge after proposing to his girlfriend. A man who had just moments before proposed to his girlfriend met a tragic end this week after he fell to his death from a bridge in Japan uh, on the Irabu Bridge. Uh, the man fell from the bridge around midnight. It was not clear exactly how he managed to slip over the bridge railing, but alcohol is suspected to have been in Involved. Uh, the woman who called 911 had accepted his proposal shortly before he slipped from the bridge. In a similarly tragic incident, a Bulgarian woman fell off a cliffside to her death, uh, I guess in 2014, just moments after accepting the marriage proposal of her boyfriend. Uh, when the man popped the question on the edge of the cliff, the woman reportedly began jumping up and down with excitement. She then lost her balance, fell some 65 feet from the cliff's edge, and died. Okay, but we're going to wrap up this story, unfortunately, without the uh, clueless fucking bitch falling to her death from a tree, unfortunately. What is Kim Kardashian up to in the middle of Hurricane Irma? Although this wasn't in the hurricane. This is, a, I'm sure, in California. Kim Kardashian 
poses in nothing but boots in a tree and faces backlash for her ill-timed post. Kim Kardashian sure knows how to break the internet and their reality star is back doing just that with a newly released image from a fashion or lack thereof shoot with acclaimed photographer Mert Atlas for the image uh, the 36 year old is seen climbing a tree and wearing nothing but hiking boots. Needless to say, Kardashian's latest, latest racy image display has sent social media into a frenzy with the Instagram account attracting more than one million thumbs up in less than one day. And while she has a lot of fans who dig it, there's also those old killjoys, some of whom found the picture particularly offensive in light of Hurricane Harvey's destruction, the DACA repeal, and other events. I like, uh, we're going to uh, share two of these tweets to close out this week's rant. Hey guys, like, Forget Hurricane Harvey and DACA ending and pay attention to me again. It's me, Kimmy. And this comment to wrap up this week's Clueless Moron Roundup Rant. Thank you very much. Kim, Kim, the world is coming to an end and we don't need another naked photo shoot of you right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. As the world is coming to an end, we have one million people uh, thumbing up Kim Kardashian's photo on Instagram, and we wonder why we are so fucked. And with that, I gotta, I gotta wrap up probably the, the last rant from Paradise. I actually see what looks like a little bit of smoke coming back into Paradise on this last, for all intents purposes, day of summer. And we're gonna get some rain blowing in, which will wash this smoke out of here real quick. Don't know what the rest of the week holds for me, but for this rant, bye guys.